Good day, ma'am. I am Emerson A. Tejada, and today I am going to report on one of the various approaches to this course analysis, which is the cohesion, coherence, and thematic development. My learning objective, first, is to discuss the terms cohesion, coherence, and thematic development in relation to this course analysis. Second one is to discuss a finished research that employs a cohesion, coherence, and thematic development discourse analysis. And then the third one is to discuss the sample finished research, highlighting the appropriacy of the discourse analysis approach use. Next slide. Now, what is discourse analysis? Now, when we say discourse analysis, this is actually defined as the analysis of language beyond the sentence. Or in other words, we can say that discourse analysis is a research method for studying written or spoken language in relation to its social context. And it aims to understand how language is used in real-life situations or real-life context. Discourse analysis is also concerned with the study of language and text and conversation. Now, when we see this course analysis, this is the study or this study the way sentences and utterances or speech go together to make text and interaction or communication and how those texts and interaction fit into our social world or social context. And also, it should be noticed that this course analysis is not just the study of language, but a way of looking at language as well. This, yeah. Next slide. There are three basic ideas in this course analysis. We have textual analysis, which focuses on writing. We also have conversational analysis, which focuses on the speaking or spoken. Now, what is the difference between textual and then conversational analysis. Now, when we say textual analysis, this is the methodology that involves understanding language, symbols, and or pictures present in text to gain information or data regarding how people make sense of and communicate life and life experiences. Visual, written, spoken messages provide cues to ways through which communication may be understood or presented. And then, on the other hand, the man when we see conversational analysis, it focuses on the speaking, wherein it looks at ordinary, everyday spoken discourse and aims to understand from a fine-grained analysis of the conversation how people manage their interaction. It also looks at how social relations are developed through the use of spoken discourse or spoken conversation. Another is that when we say conversational analysis, it is a approach or an approach to the study of social really interaction, embracing both verbal and nonverbal contacts in this situation or context of everyday life. Next slide. I mean, there are three basic of textual analysis. We have the question, coherence, and speech. But in this report, we will just focus long on two, on the two, we, uh, on the two, which is the question and coherence. Because the speech, it is kind of, it is focused now on the conversational analysis. So we will disregard it, and we will focus on the question and coherence. Next slide. Now, what is cohesion? Cohesion is a grammatical and or lexical relationship between the different elements of a text. And also, cohesion is the connection that results when the interpretation of a textual element is dependent or another element in the text. In the text. Now, cohesion refers to the connection that exists between elements in the text or in a in the Quran, in the writings, in the writing write-ups or something like that. Cohesion is produced by the repetition of element of the text, for example, recurrence, text for it, paraphrase, parallelism, and etc. Now, I have here 
or there are actually a lot of cohesive devices or cohesive ties but in this report i will just give you lang five cohesive devices the first one is the pronouns or substitution the ellipses the conjunctions the reference and then the lexical cohesion now what is pronouns or substitution now, when we say substitu substitution, it is a replacement of one linguistic item by another, or in other word, replacement of one word or phrase with another word or phrase. It is used to avoid repetition for a particular, particular item. Something you, should something you should use instead of the thing you should normally use, for example. I will have two eggs on the bread. Tapos yung reply niya is, I will have this. I will have the same. And then the second one is the ellipsis. Now, when we say ellipsis, it is the deletion or omission of a linguistic item or a word. It can be interpreted as the form of substitution in which an item is replaced by nothing. For example, where are you going? Like you will you will reply to town instead of I'm going to town to make your response shorter. And then the third one is the conjunction. Now when we say conjunction, it is a word which joins word and sentences such as the use of conjunction but, when, and, so, or, unless, and etc. And then the fourth one is the reference. When we see naman reference, it is used to describe the, the different ways in which entities such as things, people, events are referred to within text. Linguistic features, for example, pronouns are used to refer to the already mentioned items. And there are actually a lot of reference, but I will just give you three lang. I have here the personal reference, the demonstrative ref reference, and then the third and then the third one is the comparative reference. Now, what is personal reference? The personal reference, these are those pronouns, like for example, I, me, mine, his, her, they, them, you, and etc. Tapos yung demonstrative reference naman, these are <coughs> the pronouns, that, the, these are the pronoun, this, this, that, those, here, and there. Tapos, the last one is the comparative reference, wherein here the things compared show likeness or unlikeness. Like, you, you, you will use the word as to compare a thing from another. Like, for example, she is as beautiful as me. That's it. Uh, as is, a, is an example of a comparative reference. And then, the fifth one is the lexical cohesion. When we say lexical cohesion, it is established. Lexical cohesion is established through vocabulary. Now, well reference ellipses conjunction tend to link clauses which are near each other in the text. Lexical cohesion tends to link much larger parts of the text. So that is lexical cohesion. Now I have your example. I have here an example of a cohesion and it goes this way. My father once bought a Lincoln convertible. He did it by saving her. He did it by saving every penny he could. That cat would be worth a fortune nowadays. However, he sold it to help pay for my college education. Sometimes, I think I'd rather have the convertible. So, as you can see in this example, there are words that were highlighted violet and there are some words that highlighted color red. Now, as you can see or as you can observe, there are various cohesive ties used in this text, particularly in, ref in inference. Like, for example, the word father, which is the noun, and and also there are a pronoun that was used i mean there are pronoun he that was used in here three times 
and also a lin colon convertible that car it and the word in the the convertible so these examples are example of a cohesive ties and inference Another example is the cohesive ties and semantics. Now, as you can see, there are some words that were highlighted blue, and also there are some words that were highlighted red. And as you can see, there are words such as bought, saving, penny, worth, fortune, sold, and pay, and and it can be link to the word money because surely once you saw those words such as bought penny word fortune so it be the first thing that will come to your mind is the word money right and also the words once nowadays sometimes which can be linked to the word time because absolutely they are connected to time such as the ones nowadays sometimes And then the question ties in grammar. As you can see, there are some words again that were highlighted green. And also there are some words that were highlighted red. The question ties in grammar such as the word both, did, would, could, and sold is a past tense or is a tense. And also question ties or question devices for textual relation. However, Another example is my father wants, I mean, the same example, my father wants both a Lincoln convertible. The car driven by the police was red. The color doesn't suit her. She consists of three letters. However, a letter isn't as fast as the telephone call. Now, as you can see in this example, there are many classic devices such as the word Father wants both Elin Khan, the car, I mean the in the way the car, um, the in the way the color, her, she, however, a uh, in the word a letter, tapos yung a uh, in the telephone call. There are a lot of question devices or question types, but the text is very hard to interpret or comprehend. Here we can, we don't see any co coherence or the text is very hard to interpret or understood but there is a cohesion or cohesive ties that was used in this example. <laughs> now, it is very important to take note that cohesive is not equal to coherent or with many cohesive ties, cohesive devices is not equal to coherent or easy to interpret like just because there are a lot of cohesive ties in a text or there are a lot of cohesive devices used with a within a text or example of a written output or write-ups doesn't mean it can easily be interpreted or understood now what is coherence coherence is a relationship which link the meanings of utterances in a discourse or of the sentences in a text. Example, her, that's the telephone, and him, I mean the bath, her, okay. Now, as you can see in this example, there is, there is certainly no cohesive ties within this fragment of this course. Here we see co coherence but no cohesion. I mean, the sentence can easily be comprehend or it can easily be understood but there are absolutely no use of cohesive devices or cohesive ties. Next slide. Now what is the difference or what is the difference between coherence and cohesion? Now when we say cohesion, I mean yeah, say up. Now what is the difference between coherence and cohesion? Now cohesion helps to create coherence but not necessarily. I mean we and we with the use of uh, with the use of those cohesive ties cohesive devices we can create a text that can easily be interpreted or we can create a discourse another is that cohesion does not entail coherence as i said a while ago 
cohesive device as or cohesive styles is not equal to coherence or just because um, there, just because you use a lot of cohesive text or cohesive devices within a text you can your text can easily be understood and then the third one is coherence can be made without cohesive ties or cohesive devices you can create a text that are clear that are easily be understood without those cohesive ties or cohesive devices that's the end of my report the next reporter will be reported I mean, the next report will be reported by my other group mate. Thank you.